our party to go back to its foundational days. In this state, when you covet that nomination of the PDP, it's as good as you have been elected in whichever office. And I think that what you have done today is taking us back to the foundational days of the PDP in Bielsa State. It is therefore with this utmost joy and a very grateful heart to all of us in the People's Democratic Party, the leaders, the followers, and all alike, I do accept your nomination as the candidates. Governor Doye Diri will be flying the flag of the PDP in the governorship race of November 11. Well, so much on our plate tonight, and these are important issues of national concern. We move first into the proposition that doctors who train in Nigeria should stay minimum of five years into the country. A Lagos lawmaker proposed that on the floor of the House of Representatives, and there are a lot of um, reactions to that already. We'll be getting reaction from the National Assembly and from the sector, from the ex se sector. And this is a huge body that Bola Tunobu will be inheriting as it gets into office, the issue of the brain drain. And we show you the figures and the statistics. We talks about how many of the doctors trained in Nigeria are leaving the country. We just show you one of the state, uh, I mean, the countries where Nigerian doctors are leaving for. Another issue of concern is the crude oil that has been stolen. Money is going into private pockets. The National Assembly has opened up a probe onto that. We we'll dig deeper into these issues tonight. Stay with me, everyone. First and foremost, let's check out uh, your, some of your political roundup stories. We come to discuss some of these issues. Thank you, Shin. Good evening, I am Kayla Megwa, and these are your political roundup stories for today. The Federal Executive Council, chaired by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaje today, approved the provision and installation of baggage scanners at railway stations in Abuja and Kaduna at the cost of 495 million naira. The Federal Executive Council also gave approval for the maintenance and pavement of the third mainland bridge in the sum of 6.278 billion naira to be completed within 24 months. He said the move aligns with Executive Order 11 signed by President Muhammadu Buhari in April of 2022, which gave legal backing to the country's national maintenance policy. The announcement comes barely two weeks after the Lagos state government said it will undertake the rehabilitation works on the 32-year-old bridge to repair failed sections of the bridge. The piles, the underwater piles, the um, pile caps, and uh, also the replacement of the expansion joint and the bearings. Justice James Omotosha of the Federal High Court Abuja has nullified all the ward and local government congresses purportedly conducted on February the 7th by the All Progressives Congress APC in Kogi State. The Congress was for the purpose of nominating its governorship candidate for the November governorship election. The court voided the Congresses on the grounds that they were not conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act of 2022, delivering judgment. Justice Omotosha also barred the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from recognizing the delegates on the list that emanated from the so-called unlawful congresses. The court also ordered the APC leadership to conduct fresh congresses that will be compliant with Section 84 of the Electoral Acts 2022 and Section 13 of the party's constitution. The Kano State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress APC has filed a petition before the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal challenging the declaration of Mr. Abba Yusuf of the new Nigeria People's Party NNPP as the winner of the March 18, 2023 governorship poll. According to the APC, Yusuf was not qualified to contest the election as his name was not on the list of members of the NNPP submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The party also alleged that the NNPP did not win the election with a majority of lawful votes, claiming that some of the votes cast for them were invalid. 
The APC also accused the Kano Resident Electoral Commissioner of declaring use of the winner erroneously, as the margin of lead was not higher than the votes cancelled. As such, the party argued that the election should have been declared inconclusive. Ahead of the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly, the coalition of APC support groups are advocating for the office of the Senate President to be zoned to the southeast. The group today submitted a letter of appeal to the National Working Committee of the party. The spokesperson of the group, Mr. Dele Fulani, says in the interest of equity and natural justice, zoning of the office of the Senate President of the southeast will promote politics of inclusivity and national cohesion. The group further asked the National Working Committee of the APC to specifically microzone the office of the Senate President to the most senior ranking Senate from the southeast. The chairperson of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Mrs. Loretta Onoche, has been speaking on her alleged suspension from the All Progressive Congress by her ward over alleged anti party activities. Speaking to journalists during her visit to her ward in Onicha Olona, Anyocha North Local Government Area of Delta State, Mrs. Onoche says the alleged suspension was initiated by strangers and insists that the suspension does not stand. I was not suspended. In fact, the name that was suspended was not me because um, I know how to spell my name, so if I see my name, I will clearly... The governorship aspirant of the Labour Party in Imo State, Mr. Martin Agbaso, is confident of his party winning the governorship election in November of 2023. Mr. Agbaso made the statement when he visited the party's national secretariat in Abuja. He also denied reports that he is in the contest to ensure a victory for Governor Hopos Odimma in the election. You know that I can't play second fiddle to anybody. I can't uh, hold space for anybody. And uh, we have investigated it in the last couple of days. The same people that they are suggesting that I'm working with are the people planting this rumor. A group under the ages of the natives is asking candidates in the last presidential election to join hands with the president-elect Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu to rebuild Nigeria. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the leader of the group, Mr. Olalekon Edward, specifically urged the candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, as well as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, to emulate President Muhammadu Buhari, who, after losing presidential elections three times, allowed the court processes and stayed back in Nigeria to contribute to democratic growth. Those are your political roundup stories for today. It's back to you, Shane. All right, tonight, uh, to, you, you hear when people say, uh, should we take the first, bad news or the good news first? But incidentally, the two stories that we have to, for discussion are not so good, uh, the bad news, yeah. And we're looking at how we can get things better. Uh, the House of Representatives, the Hard Court Committee on the floor uh, on oil theft, has invited several high-ranking officials in the federal government over its investigation into the alleged loss of over 2.4 billion U.S. dollars in revenue from illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil export in 2015. Some of the officials invited at the hearing uh, to answer questions are the Minister of Finance, Dana Ahmed, the Secretary General, uh, the, the Secretary of the Federation, uh, Boss Mustafa, and also uh, the Acting Accountant General of the Federation, Siva Okoliebo, and the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, among others. The committee is also concerned about the disparity in figures from crude oil sales from 2011 to 2014 and is accusing the Minister of Finance of approving payments to whistleblowers in variance with the whistleblower policy. These are the issues. I'll allow you to take a listen to one of the soundbite of what transpired on the floor. If there are recoveries being made from whistleblower revelations, we expect those monies to be paid into the accounts of the Federation as required by law, and if any expenditure is to be made, it should come through the National Assembly. But that does not appear to be the case, and we are inviting the Honorable Minister of Finance, the Attorney General of the Federation, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, and all other stakeholders involved in the implementation of the whistleblower policy to appear before the committee to provide clarification on the operation of this policy and the approvals being made by the Honorable Minister of Finance. 
And with regards to the issue of crude oil, we are expecting the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Index, NATI, oil and gas companies who operate fields and engage in export, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the Accountant General himself to be present, including the Budget Office of the Federation, to be present and provide clarification to the issues under investigation. There are certain individuals as well that we need to investigate. Certain whistleblower revelations show that from the Paris crop refund, hundreds of millions of dollars were paid into company accounts without any record. It doesn't look to me like something, not something. A lot of things are going wrong, have gone wrong. And those until we unravel and we unveil all of these, uh, they are massive. If those who are involved in all of these will tell you, those who have dug into these for years would let you know. One of those who have done a lot of work in unraveling, and one of the first, one of the first whistleblower on this matter joins me tonight on the program. He appeared before the committee and he's here. He's a former member of um, uh, the House of Representatives and uh, a commissioner, uh, federal commissioner in the ICPC board. No, Honorable, Bureau of Conduct. Uh, Bureau of, <laughs> conduct of the Bureau of con uh, Conduct of Code of, Code of Conduct of Bureau. Bureau, yeah. Honorable Johnson Agbonyema, thank you so much for joining us. Thank tonight. you for having me and thank you to our viewers. And I have a data and policy analyst, Mr. Johnson Kolawale. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Well, thank so you Johnson and Johnson, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Johnson and Johnson are the ones who are going to be unraveling. He's done a lot of work also in terms of those who have stolen Nigeria uh, bl blind in the, over the years. Honorable. A lot, I mean, I remember it was in 2016 yeah. that we had you on the program. Yeah. And you were saying all of these figures, and I thought that this cannot be true, and these figures can be right. You have a whole lot of documents on your table right there. Give us an understanding of how much Nigeria has lost, and perhaps the caliber of people, or the kind of people that are involved in these alleged sleaze and uh, theft of our common patrimony. Well, thank you. Uh... My brother Ashil, and uh, I want to appreciate our viewers, Nigerians. As you may know, yeah, of course, there's no need for me to really tell you. You are privileged to most of this uh, information. We've discussed this extensively over the years. Uh, you were the first one who also had me on this uh, on your platform uh, to discuss the issue when I was at the time in the House of Reps, a session. Uh, that was when, after moving the motion, uh, before moving the motion, I think uh, I have done a lot of extensive work. Uh, I traveled out to the U.S. Uh, to ascertain a lot of information that I was able to gather as at that time. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to fail to always say the way it is that uh, those who have uh, tried as much as possible to see that all these are brought to the, at least, for the face of Nigerian people, uh, people like uh, Tom Polo, who initiated this from the onset, that uh, there must be a forensic audit to investigate the, the issue of uh, the crude oil production in this country. Because a lot of Nigerians today, we don't know the figure of production, daily production. We just speculate. They say that is what we hear. So he approached the former president, President Jonathan, um, which, of course, President Jonathan was very also excited. You know, he wanted to investigate from 1999 to present. That was when Mr. President, former president, said, no, let we should investigate his own tenure. And uh, so it was a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, assignment. Uh, and then uh, the former minister of... Uh, Petroleum or state that was Desiani, 
uh, she was not really, she was not quite, you know, in agreement with the, you know, investigation and all that. And uh, Topolo was very angry. So, however the case might be, the president agreed, uh, which, of course, he called for a, a larger meeting. You know, he was there, and vice president and the governor from uh, the Niger Delta region. They were all in present. They were present at that meeting. Uh, when they would now agree to engage a more company, a molecular power system, and uh, they had an agreement. This is the agreement here. The agreement that the, the government, through Limasa, signed with the molecular power system to engage and try to, on L to see, uh, to conduct a forensic, you know, and looking at the mapping system. So what year did they start? That was 2011. That's when the molecular uh, system company started. It started, uh, you know, to see that if they can uh, see what left Nigeria to global destination, what led the shore of Nigeria. So let's get, let, let's give our viewers the perspective. So Nigeria, we have crude oil, which is underground, as crude as it comes. Yeah. And that is what is being refined into kerosene, into diesel, into petrol, and all of that. But because of our refineries that are bad, we are unable to refine on Nigerian soil. That's, that's a different issue. No, 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 just for a moment. I'm given perspective. Yeah. Because people will wonder why do the crude have to, or does the crude need to leave Nigerian shores? So there will be a big question on why does the crude need to leave Nigerian shore? So this crude leaves Nigerian shore, isn't it? This is undeclared, undeclared crude that left Nigeria shore. To global destination. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the bunker. Yes, there are bunker. No, no, I'm not even talking about. I'm, I'm giving. But I'm talking about the one that left the with ships. That, absolutely. That left with ships from our backyard to global destination, and it was 51 country that the government mandated the molecular power system to undertake, but they were able to conduct 41 country, and United States was the highest, which of course. What landed in the United States was 391 million plus barrels, worth over $17 billion as a dam. So, and the, 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 the. And what happened is that we do not, we cannot account for it. Government does not know. Not declared. Not at declared all. at all. Undeclared. 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 undeclared at all. At I'm all. not talking about undeclared. And the US custom did a wonderful job by giving molecular power system every detail. Molecular power system, of course, they engage uh, Lomos out of Houston. They are the number one in the world having the mapping system to be able to monitor every vessel leaving every shore in the world. So they were able to monitor and undertake and confirm with the custom what landed through Port of Houston and Port of Le Chasse. It's my boggling. Over 391 million barrels amounting to over $17 billion, as are then. So I don't know what has happened from 2014 to present. So the question remains, what is happening to our dear nation? So this, these figures and these facts are in some of the files and documents that you have. Yes, you. yes. And it, it has been presented to the House of Representatives, isn't it? Listen to me, it's not about brief presenter, uh, Mr. No, because Shea. there is an ongoing L investigation. Listen, le 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 you have forgotten. I moved this motion. This motion is here. This is a motion since 2016. Urgent need to investigate the over $17 billion stolen from undeclared crude oil and liquefied natural gas export to global destination. This is, I don't have time to read all of them here, but I'm telling you, we set the House of Rep then set up an ad hoc committee to look into it. And at the end of the day, guess what? They did a wonderful job. But you know what is, what is surprising to me? What is happening that up to now, that's what I asked my honorable brothers and sisters in the house. After seven years, you are, are inviting me to throw more light because of the love I have for this country. Because I spent so much time, Mr. Shehu, you know, I spent, I went to you more than four times, met with the United States Congress, met with the, there is the DOJ, Department of Justice. The United States Congress gave us so much support. Then the Attorney General of the Federation, the city Attorney General Malami, also supported us 
is also sent some of the people in his office to also accompany us. We had several meetings in the United States Congress just to see how we can so help our country. The problem now is that the facts are there, but it has not been, uh, it has not been worked upon in terms let, of... Let, 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 let me tell you, you have a lot of cases. The federal government took it upon themselves, took this, some of these companies to court. A lot are of these time. indigenous companies? Some of the indigenous companies, some of them are multinational companies, IOCs, international oil companies. Who are still in Nigeria's oil. Yes, it conniver it, with some of our people. Our people, yes. But guess, let me tell you this was very you know, pathetic and disheartening. The lawyer engaged by the federal government, the federal government met well. They met well. The federal government engaged our own lawyer. Our lawyer, Nigerian lawyers, some of them are SAN. They connive with the IOCs and some of these Nigerian companies to derail the will of progress. Up to now, have you had any judgment on all these cases? That the lead counsel of this, all these lawyers, his name is Anthony Jerome. He's a well-known lawyer in the United States of America. He's an American. That was who led the counsel to unveil and unearth this rubbish. But guess what? The man said, I gave you the interview he granted. You showed it on channels. On channels. Yeah. He said, Honorable EJ, I am not coming back to Nigeria again. I said, why? He said, your people are your own problem. The only way we can have a headway, we have to take this litigation straight to the United States. Once this is in the United States, we have a headway. All right. Just hold on for a moment. Let me bring in, uh, you have done a lot of work, uh, <laughs> I mean, outside of the fact that people take these things, but even the monies that have been spent in that corridor, you've done a lot of work. Give me an understanding of what you make of what is going on here. Yeah. You know, all theft has been part of our history as a country uh, for a long time. The issue is it has assumed a very different dimension these days, and um, it worries someone, indeed. And each time you look at corruption, not only in the oil sector, in practically all the sectors in the country, you will see one fundamental issue, is that we don't, ha we don't have the political will to take the right action. Look at the KPIs, the key performance indicators of practically all the sectors, and you will come to one conclusion. It is that political will to take the right action for time. See, the, uh, in political science, they will tell you that the modernization theorists will, will lay the fact that, oh, the entire problem of Africa, it's, 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 it's about Africans alone. That the fact that we are not developed, you know, it's just our fault. But the African theorists also will tell you through their dependency theories that this is not about us alone. It is about the foundation you laid. What is the foundation in this aspect? In those days, when the colonial masters came, now, they will tell you the kind of crop they want you to grow, and they also dictate the price that they will pay for it. So that brought about disarticulation. And that was transferred to the multinational companies, including the IOC, the international oil companies. Remember, these guys are the fingers, the hand of this, you know, of this countries in our place here. And part time, you have the local enablers that help them, just like in those days where your brothers and sisters, you know, will sell ourselves to them as slaves. The same thing is ongoing now, and unfortunately. These guys, they found their ways to government. You know, they sponsor elections. They look at who is coming. They, you know, they interface with us. They so know our fingers problems. are everywhere. It's everywhere. Just like when Jonathan said that Boko Haram has infiltrated, you know, his government. The same thing you have. The multinational corporations, they are, so you will see their fingers in every, everywhere because they know the right language. If you hear the mother of corruption, those guys are the real transporter of that. You know, they, they, they throw the card on the table. And unfortunately, each time, we don't have leaders with the right political will, you know, to take the right action. That is why you talk about character, competence, and capacity in governance. Aside from the competence, you need the character to do the right thing. See, 
we've done quite a number of work, including NNPC. You are aware of this. Mm -hmm. We are only able to do one of the agencies. And of course, the mess was everywhere. And we were expecting the government to act. What happened? Nothing was done. As long as you keep romancing these guys when they do evil, as long as you keep saying whatever you've done, don't worry. You know, just come to our means. Your sins are forgiven. We will continue to have this issue. But, now, why is it but, that... But, Johnson, yeah, yeah. just for a moment. Yeah. These facts are on the table. Someone like uh, Honorable Johnson Agboima, yeah. he's done an intensive work. And over the years, there were, there's a lull about the findings. Nobody was doing anything about it. Now, he's in the corridor under the tables of federal lawmakers. Is it in the right place for us to get the right action, for us to get justice for those who have stolen Nigerians' wealth? Now, speaking about or talking about institutional responsibility, you can answer yes, it is in the right place. But he said something to you. He raised the motion. He moved the motion 2016. He left, you know, he left the house since 2019. This same whistleblower has been making, has been has been crying, not today. So why are we just waking up to the responsibility now? You ask the question. Is it, see, in most cases, if the National Assembly will take responsibility in, you know, in its oversight function, we want to have you know, the many decay you have in the system. Because one, when you make the law, you ought, you have the oversight function over the laws you make, you know, the budget. They have to supervise you know, many of these agencies and when they come for budget, you ought to look, their, I mean, look at their budget performance. Look at what they did before, before you grant them the new one. But unfortunately, one, we have two issues. The first is that when they try to do their job, the executive, you know, try to make a scapegoat, you know, of them. And the public, they don't understand the balanced nature that the National Assembly ought to create. So they make the noise. One, two. They themselves, quite a number, you know, we should look at our leadership recruitment process. Who are these people? Many of them, what have they done before? What experience are they bringing to the, you know, parliament in the first instance? For example, I was going to move a motion that we should have those who are, you know, trying to contest for the speakership position to come for debate in your station. You won't organize debate only, you know, for governorship or president. Organize for those who want to be speakers. Who want to be the senior president? Let us know what they are bringing to the table, and so so that we know if they can actually pilot the affairs and give the nation what we want. A lot of times, when you hear probe, Nigerians will tell you, "Oh, they want to take their share." The same thing is happening, you know, at the executive level of government. When these guys point the torchlight, they want to take yeah. their share. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Yeah. honorable, yeah. I saw you nod in the negative when I said. Uh, this issue are on the table of the federal lawmakers, if it was in the right place. Well, let me say this. Uh, if after 2016, motion moved, deliberated on, you know, and today, this is about seven years ago, and we are still talking about the same issue, it called for worries. Is just like he rightly said, we have, to ha we have to have political will, one, and Nigerians, which of course is the number one, because this country belongs to all of us. Whether you are a public officer or you are just doing business somewhere, you are a Nigerian. You are part of the government. Seeing a crime, be committed, and refusing to report the scene of that crime to the nearest law enforcement agency, you are as guilty as the man or woman who committed that crime. What am I trying to say? Every Nigerian, those lawyers who derailed, who connived to put Nigeria where we are today, and do you know what will surprise you? Some of these lawyers, they were also writing back to government, requesting to be paid over 500 million each for a job they did not do. Now, it takes two to tango. If we have to go back, I will call. I said, where is the accountant general in this matter? Where is NAPC in this matter? Where the custom in this matter? Well, of course, before, when you have to load ship, there must be fiscalization policy where you have all these 
Navy, police, custom. Are you with me? And uh, NPC staff, DPRO, to be at that point where it is being loaded. But unfortunately, now, the meter that is used for the military purchase by IOC, calibrated by them, owned by them, and operated by them, what do you expect? You garbage in, you garbage out. Now, if you tell me, if NAPC, this is the question, that the fundamental question that I need millions of answers for. If you say, you say in 2011, what you declare, the barriers that you declare in 2011 is 301 million. Eh? 772, no, 301 billion. Eh? 301 million, 770,059 barriers, 2011. I repeat, 301 million, 770,059 barriers are the price as barrels, $111 per barrel. Barrel. Totally, now the receipted money is $33 billion, $768 million, $69,602. Billions of dollars, as at 2011. Now you go to 2012, where I'm having issue. 296 million barrels, 480,785 barrels. Average price of $112.01 per, per, per barrel. Now, money receipted, 33 billion, 208 million, 812, 812,727. Now, go to 2013. NIPC, this is the old declaration. 267 million, 120,559 barrels. Average price of $110.12 per barrel. Now, money receipted, 29 billion, 415 million, 315,957. This is billions of dollars. Now, finally, 2014 which, of course, that I undertake. They declared 270,719,119 barrels with the average price of $101.91. With the receipted money, 27,588,985,000 billions. Calculate the total amount of 2011 to 2014, the total barrier is 1,136,090,522 barriers. And the total money receipted, the total amount, dollar amount, $123 billion, $981,183,703 billions of dollars. This is one that will amaze you now. CBA confirmation receipt. In that year, 2011, they said they received $40 billion. $40 billion, $345 million, $650,000. So, what's the what's difference? Against, what's the what's difference? The what's difference? The difference is what we. What, what do I mean? No, no, 2011 from the receipted and what CBN confirmed? $33 billion. And CBN uh, confirmed 14. 40 billion. Listen now. And 2022, I mean 20, uh, 11. 2012. 2012, they received 10 billion, 184 million, 830,000. So how much did, did NLPC receipt? NLPC received 33 billion. So that's almost half of, or more than no, half. No, it's not half a thought. It, it, a thought now, of no, go to 2013. 2013. They received eight billion four hundred and eight million. Okay, it's, it's reduced. Million, it's coming million, down. I mean, four hundred seventy-nine thousand five hundred thirty-nine. Now billion, and that same two thousand and thirteen, NFPC received. Look, 
29 billion. Look at the difference. Hold on. Now you go to 2014. There is, there is you know, CBA confirmation receipt. 9 billion, 810 million, 551,946. And what did NFPC, what is their yeah. declaration? 27 billion receipted. Now, now so, so the total, it, it, listen yeah. now, it, the total amount from 2011 to 2014 of CBA confirmation receipt is 42 billion, 700 and 49 million, 912,410 billion. The difference of 81 billion, 231 million, 271,293 so, so, so now. So, so, so these are the millions billion. of questions. Now, uh, hold on, hold on, uh, Honorable, hold on. Yeah. Now, the question is, if nothing was done since 2017, what is the assurance that the same National Assembly will do something now? See, let me tell you, National Assembly are to make laws for the good governance of the people, for the nation. Yes, we, they conduct oversight function, conduct, you know, investigation or public hearing by calling you know, stakeholders. After everything is done, it's not sent to the committee of the whole where it is now, you know, voted upon. Once it is adopted, it is now sent to the executive. It is not left for the executive for implementation. Of which, that, I mean, it, that's going to be, because this government is really going, I mean, it's just, you know so, why, so that's a big question. You, yeah. know, you know why you can't blame the executive yeah. alone? If you've turned yourself to uh, an extension of the executive arm of government, so what do you get? Now, no, if you've no, censored, I disagree. No, sorry, no, sorry. Hold on, hold on. No, the, the, the government, sorry, the federal sorry. government went to court. Sorry, you will protect your Let him land. The federal government Let him land. Just go ahead. Honorable Holden. Now, if I send you something as a, I mean, as, as a body, and you refuse to act on it, when you send yours, do I not have the power to also, I mean, Either step it down act or, yeah. or step oh, it yeah. down or insist that if you don't act on mine, I'm not going to act on this. You know, this issue of political affairs, let us settle this internally. We politicize governance and we have refused to separate politics from economy. That is why leaders must understand the political side of so, leadership and the economic side. So, they are different. So that, that's why, I, I mean, I want us to wrap up on this, Honorable. Where do we go from here? You've well, been on this journey for a long time. I mean, it's, 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 it's just a, a roller coaster. It's not bubbly. All in circles. And billions of dollars are involved. What would be your submission tonight on the way forward? For me, Nigeria, we are not broke. Nigeria is rich. Just like Barrister Atoli Jerome said to me, he said, EJ, morning, a lot of money has been stolen from your country. You must get it back. Try and do your best. I wept for this country. Where do you start? If the government, in their own will, took this matter to court, and the same we Nigerians work against the same government, the same Nigeria of your own, Conniving with the IOC, that is my pain. The only way, like, I have gone around, I've spoken to a lot of people, the only way is taking the litigation to the United States. Uh, as long as it's here in Nigeria, nothing will be done. Nothing will be done no. because they are going to circumvent, all right. they are going to compromise because we are our own worst Enemy. We need right. to go now. All right. yeah. So you have an attorney general, right? Who selected the lawyers? Who appointed them? The executive arm of government. You can create a small screen by just, you know, taking a case to court. And you want to just show that you're working when nothing is done. So why I disagree with him that the you know, executive is not acting is that if you say the lawyers are, are not doing their job, you know, let me use that word, you know, to be very careful. Who, who appointed them? The executive arm of government. So is it that the attorney general office is not knowledgeable enough to know 
what they should get from a case to know when to sanction the lawyers or when to change them. Now, the same office will be paying them their claims. You know, so I think in this game here, somebody is, dis you know, is deceiving somebody. We're not ready to work. It's so sad. Until we have yeah. a strong institution yeah. and a strong, I mean, a strong characters in government to prosecute this, we'll go nowhere. Nigeria is, is, is today indebted. We are swimming in debt crisis. And unfortunately... We're hearing these figures that I'm yes, hearing. Yes, it, we it's can, actually... It, it can solve our problem. Yeah. We need to you go know. now because we need to speak uh, to, to another issue and take a break. But I most sincerely thank you, Honorable. Uh, it's glad to have you. I mean, sad that we're talking about these same figures several years after. Thank you so much. Please stick around with me. Honorable, thank you so much. It's great thank to you for having me. We take a break, everyone. When we come back, we talk about yet another issue that is emotional for me. And the fact that a lot of Nigerians, just at every opportunity they have, want to leave this country. A lawmaker said he wants to make a bill that if you are a trained Nigerian lawyer, you stay at least five years in this country. Well, a lot of people are reacting to this. You stay on that matter when we we'll talk about this break, everyone. Just again. I wish I was you don't need to let up your life. Oh, man, the police is why I am. I wish I was you don't need to let up your house. Oh, man, the police is why I am. Oh, man, the police is why I love it. So let's get down to business. Yeah. You mean you're trying to spy too? What is this? That's a personal account. <laughs> uh, that is still me. I mean, you want to transfer all these meals into your personal account. I mean, I supply the movers and shakers of society. I mean, I do things properly. If you do not have a bank account in your business name, I cannot trust you. You better go visit moneypoint.com. Open a business account in your business name. Then me and you go fit talk. Which one be these money points in? Whatever it takes to make sure you have a business account opened in your business name, we'll do it as your sure banker. But why did it Morifa tell me about money points earlier? Where's Morifa? Open a bank account in your business name with money point. Experience the opulence and security of Swiss Street Doors. With over 30 years' experience, exclusive with a touch of history and craftsmanship, Swiss Street Doors are made from the finest ancient agar and ivory wood. A range of exclusive armored doors, elegant interior doors, carefully crafted by world renowned architects and engineers. At Swiss Street, a door is much more, plus premium quality onyx stones and luxury interiors. Visit Swiss Street today or call now. Swiss Street, blend of beauty and security. My name is architect Adeyemi Makinde, project director, Adron Homes and Properties Limited. I'd like to introduce to you our latest housing product, the Oremi series. This product is designed with the concept of encouraging communal living amongst residents living within the same environment. We have the two bedroom bungalow units called Oremi, three bedroom bungalow units called Oremi Atata. And we have three bedroom duplex unit called Oremi Gongon. Join us and key into the Oremi series today. The Oremi series will boast of the following. Maximum security with CCTV, swimming pool, playground, recreational area, gym, solar street lights, adequate parking space, excellent infrastructure, well laid out roads and drainage system, plus many more. Adron Homes, making the incredible affordable.
so much, everyone, for staying with us. Well, in a bid to halt the increase in numbers of medical doctors leaving Nigeria for greener pastures, a bill that is sponsored by a federal lawmaker from Lagos, Honorable Ganiu Abiodun Johnson, to prevent Nigerian trained medical or dental practitioners from being granted full licenses until they have worked for a minimum of five years in the country has passed a second reading uh, in the House of Representatives. The bill is known as a bill for an act to amend the Medical and Dental Practitioners Act law of the Federation of Nigeria to mandate any Nigerian trained medical and dental practitioner to practice in Nigeria for a minimum of five years before being granted a full license by the council in order to make quality health services available to Nigeria. Well, the intention is to stop the brain drain. The intention is that there are a lot of Nigerians that have left this country. But let me allow you, before I show you some of the figures that I have, just Nigerians living to just one country, let me allow you to listen to Honorable Johnson on the floor of the House of Representatives. It's, it's an average of um, $82,000 to $100. That translates to over $60 million in Naira. Dito, that's at the exchange rate of seven fifty uh, Naira per dollar. Dito in UK. So if you uh, realize, if they can now take advantage of our situation, okay, and now open their doors, because just recently, in 2020, UK opened a healthcare and a visa to people. They were all going to UK and US too, and Canada. So what should we do? Should we fall our arms? So now, and I said, okay, Maybe to give back to the society, that is to our people, after training you, yes, we are not saying you cannot go abroad to make your money, but if we save government and subsidize your tuition, okay, I mean, to the tune of uh, 40 to uh, 150,000, the least we can get from you is that after your expansion, before you are given full license, before you are given full license, it's a, yes, before you are given full license, at least you can give back to the society within a period of five years. So after five years, you are free to go. At least you're giving back to the society. Well, there is an intention from the Honorable Lawmaker who spoke on the floor. But there is also the fact that a lot of Nigerians want better lives. And can you blame people for seeking better lives as much as they want to? It's causing Nigeria brain drain, yes. Well, let me give you the fig uh, figures that, uh, to that effect. In the UK alone, these are the numbers for you. In 2015, 233 Nigerian doctors have migrated to the UK. 2016 moved to 20, 279. 2017, it moved to 475. 2018, the number went up to 852. In 2019, 1,347 Nigerian doctors trained here migrated to the UK. It dropped in 2020, 833 people. In 2021, 932. But if you look at it, Nigerian ed workers in Nigeria, there's 727 medical doctors trained in Nigeria and relocated to the UK in 2022. If you put that figures together, it will tell you that more people had left Nigeria in 2022 to the UK. And I'm giving only the United Kingdom. I'm not talking about Saudi Arabia. I'm not talking about the United States. In Texas, in, uh, in Georgia, in the state of Georgia and Texas, they can tell you how many Nigerian trained doctors are now practicing there in that country. Now, in the Nigerian, Nigerian health workers in the UK, as of 2022, stand as 13,609. That is the third behind Pakistan and India. Now, if you look at it, what does the World Health Organization require? It says there should be a ratio of one doctor to 600 patients. In Nigeria, we have one doctor to 5,000. So do you blame the lawmaker who was proposing that the way things are going, it will get to a point in time that 
we may not have enough doctors to treat patients in a Nigerian doctor in a Nigerian hospitals. Let's get to the conversation, everyone. I have joining me the Senate Committee Chair on Health, Senator Ibrahim Oluri Egbe, himself a medical doctor. Uh, he joins us virtually from Saudi Arabia. And we have uh, the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Dr. Ojima Uche, who joins us virtually also from Enugu. Thank you so much for joining us. And I still have with me um, a data and policy analyst, Mr. Johnson Kalole, here in our studio. Let me first and foremost get a view of the expert here, because the intention of um, uh, the honorable lawmaker that will move the motion uh, proposing that bill that you should spend five years first and foremost before moving out. Uh, president, uh, the NMA president, give us an understanding of how bad things are of Nigerian doctors seeking greener pastures. Thank you very much, uh, Shehu, for this opportunity. And I wish to also say good evening to the viewers. Well, um, if you don't value what you have, you are bound to lose it. And you don't know what you have until you lose it. That is what is happening in Nigeria today. If you cast your mind back, you will realize that as far back as 2012 period, the Nigerian Medical Association has been complaining that Nigerian doctors are leaving because they are not well taken care of. And uh, you cannot reinvent the wheel. Medicine is a universal profession with standards and guidelines. We cannot come to Nigeria. Instead of finding out the problem and solving it, we bring a quick fix that will destroy the medical profession totally. Because the solution to headache cannot be decapitation in any way. If you decapitate a man, yeah, you've cured his headache, but he won't be alive. So if you now decide that Nigerian doctors cannot have full or permanent license for five years after graduation. Automatically, you have made them house officers for five years because all he's talking about giving back to the society, okay, can only be possible if you have a full license. You cannot practice a loan <laughs> if you do not have a full license. You can't even be a youth copper because a youth core doctor has full license. That is why he can practice a loan in a particular place. You cannot be a medical officer. You cannot join residency training if you don't have full license, unless you are going to waive full license for all these people. And therefore, they are no longer liable or culpable for whatever goes wrong. So what I'm saying is that that is not the solution. And automatically, you're going to discourage the young doc, uh, medical students from reading medicine. Again, my own fear now is that he may have spooked the doctors that may be planning to live in a year to start living immediately before they are clamped down. All right. So Do he Dr. has Uche, been advocating yeah. what's in the situation. Yes. Let me ask you a quick question that will help our conversation tonight. Um, yeah. How many members do you have at the moment in Nigeria, practicing in Nigeria? Well, I can tell you, we have, we, based on new graduates and everything, we should have an average of about 25 to 30,000. Okay, so give us an understanding of, well, you, you probably will know uh, the number of doctors that have left this, the shores of the country in the last six, uh, 12 months. Is it possible that you can tell us if you know? Well, I cannot tell you that because you know why? Because uh, what we commonly have visible are those migrating to Western nations like UK, like Canada, uh, USA, but a lot are now going to Eastern uh, uh, Mediterranean aspects like Saudi Arabia, uh, places like Oman, Kuwait, Qatar. But the fundamental truth is that the number living to those areas cannot be less than 2,000. And they are specialists that go towards those areas. They do not take young doctors. They want people that are ready to be deployed. So that is another... So in, in, in the class of resident doctors, you mean? Those who are just a few years from senior. being consultants? Yes, from that class above, 
is what goes to those Mediterranean areas. So like give Sahara us an understanding, Asia. Doctor. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to uh, uh, paint something here so that, I mean, whoever is in government or whoever has a capacity, I mean, because this also show uh, of how impoverished our people are. If Nigerians are okay, maybe the number of people who are wanted, and it's not only doctors, our own profession too, there are a lot of oh. people, our colleagues who have left the country. Now, give Thank us you. an understanding how long it could take a doctor to become a resident doctor or a consultant. Okay. Now, after finishing your house job and going for youth service, that is, after returning from service, that's when you can join residency training, which is the specialization process. Depending on the course, there is no residency training that takes less than six years. There is no aspect. Some, like neurosurgery, can take up to eight years or more. So you are talking of an average of six to eight years of practice. That is the time the person would have used to become a specialist is when... Somebody is proposing that he be kept as a house officer, continuing to work under perpetuity, under someone. It, it does not make sense all at right. all. Give me a moment. Let me cross to Saudi Arabia with the Senate Committee Chair on, uh, on Health, uh, Senator Olori Egbe, himself a doctor who's practiced widely out of the, outside of this country. Senator, um, you are worried, I, I assume, about the manner in which Nigerians have left this country, medical doctors, that is. But give us an understanding. Your colleague in the House of Reps, uh, Honorable Johnson, who has moved this motion, I'm understanding that he has a good intention. The fact that there is a deterioration in the medical practice in Nigeria. I mean, I've read that you disagreed with him. On what basis? Give us an understanding of your position. Well, I, 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 thank you very much, uh, Sean. I think the basis is that, yes, it's a concern, it's a problem that we have doctors from Nigeria living. But the first question is that it's not only doctors that are living. Even within the medical profession, we have nurses that are living. They are also critical to deliver quality and services. Two, the doctors that are living are not the new graduate. The more of the, most of the doctors that are living and that are more critical to us are the rest of, are the ones that have been trained beyond uh, just the uh, basic training who are specialists. Those are the ones that give us much more concern. In fact, there, are, there was an internal action that was taken to that. The third thing is that the solution being preferred by him through this bill will not solve the problem. It will rather create more problem for us. Rather, because we have to look at you have to look at a call as a doctor. How, what do we do? We diagnose. A patient, we've tried to find out what's the cause of the problem. Then we treat the problem. The cause of why doctors are moving is not cannot just be stopped by say you deny them license. We have to address the cause, and the causes are the remunerations are not uh, what we can say is a take home for a doctor that has been trained for such years. I mean, for the caliber of people that they are, then the condition of service. So there are ways through which we can introduce certain quick wins to en ensure people stay. One, we, that is we have to invest more in the health sector to get to pay doctors better, to bond them through giving them some incentives and motivation. Like we suggested the other day, give doctors, uh, car, uh, you give them car loan, you give them mortgage, Obviously. that a doctor that graduates, we, ha we immediately have a car. This to happen in the country. A doctor that graduates, we have a loan to own a house. These are things that will make people to stay in the country, to go through training, to practice, to deliver services. But the other thing is, which is very, very critical, is about the working environment. Because you can be trained as a doctor, but you want to work, you don't have the tools to work. These are not happening. Then the other thing is about the security, the general security and the economic situation. Of course, that does, it does affect every other person in the country, but because doctors are, uh, the uh, services are required in other places, that's why they leave. So we have to address those internal issues to medicine as well as the, the, general, uh, the general environment. Many doctors are living now not even because of that, they have their families, but because of the insecurity. So, because so, doctors so, so, are being killed. Senator, Senator no, Rebe, no. just for a moment, let me, let me jump yes. in. So now, the issue of brain drain and migration that, that we see in this large number, I understand that in 2022 alone, just to the UK, and I'm making reference to the UK because it does look yes. to me in the last three years or so, the UK has become a prime place for a lot of Nigerian professionals to now go to to work and all of that. I mean, there are a lot, a lot of economic reasons to that also. 
and a lot of uh, uh, visa issues that are surrounded it, and the decision of that country also to tweak around uh, their, their immigration policy. But immigration I'd like to ask you, because you are in government, and some people might get so upset about you guys who are in government, because the program, problem is deeper than that. It is not only medical doctors, and there are a lot of reasons why Nigerians are wanting to leave. You are talking about car loans and all of that. People are collecting loans, selling their cars just to travel. It's called Jackpot Syndrome. I don't know if you have heard it. A lot of us who do not have money, we understand what Jackpot Syndrome is. But it is a phenomenon that are taking young Nigerians and those who have invested so much in the country and leaving the country and using those mental resources in other crimes. Yes, uh, that's why I said these are issues that are, the government is looking at in several ways. I would say that, of course, this government is winding down and the new government coming in. We need to stabilize our environment in terms of security, in terms of the economic opportunities, for generally for the people. Of course, that's why I'm saying also that the issue of isolating doctors and trying to prevent them from going through a licensing uh, policy will not work. Because rather, it will discourage many more people to even study medicine. But I need to step back. While I, I, I don't want to go directly into issues, we have issue of production, even in the country. We are not producing enough because many people are not even attracted to read science or to go and read medicine because of the time it takes and because after wasting, in quote, spending such a time, what did they earn at the end of the day? Because let me go, just come down. We, are, we, are, we look at the Nigerian situation. A graduate that probably gets to some of the agencies like Central Bank and NAPC who are not doctors, they earn times three, times five what the doctors will earn. They spend less years in, in, the, in, the, in the, what do you call it, in, in the school. So these are things that discourage people from going to medicine. So yes, the government generally, we have to look at the economic, the social and the security issues of our country and do more to make Nigerians, young Nigerians generally, to stay. In fact, it's not only young. We have the middle age that are going. We have people in their 40s who, because most of the people that are resident that are consultants, consultants are living in droves. That's the one that gives us more concern within the even the medical profession. They are living because, as we said, I mean, it's not only about remuneration. Most of those consultants, they already settled, they have their families. But it's about the working environment. All it's right. about uh, the social, the security issue. So that's a lot like I wrote, what I wrote out. The bill specifically, of course, raised a concern. But the solution being preferred has more challenges. Because there are issues that we can't discuss here. The issue of how do we license a doctor? When you say somebody is not be licensed after five years, how do you call such a doctor? And he said Nigerian trained doctors. He also forgot that it's not every doctor trained in Nigeria that the government pay for. We have quite a number of private universities. They are still trained in Nigeria. But in a way, either you are trained in Nigeria or you are trained abroad, you have to come back home to do your housemanship. Senator, you your just, yeah, Senator, you paid. Yeah, just give me a moment. Yeah, just give me a moment. Yes. We're, we're doing it for a break in 60 seconds, but I would like Mr. Johnson to comment quickly on the proposition of the lawmaker. What do you make of it? I think he must have gotten that from Egypt, you know, in Egypt, the law says that you must practice, you know, if uh, 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 at the public health, you know, sector for like three to five years before you can go to the private sector or leave the country. But even in Egypt, where you have that law, they have the problem. Within three years, over 13,000, no, yes, about 12,000, you know, public health workers left the country. Last year alone, 2022, about 4,000 plus doctors left the country on the, I mean, at the average of 14 you know, public uh, health workers per day leaving the country. Well, for what? One, economic reason. Two, the working environment. So if you're proposing that here, regardless of what you mean, of course, there are problems, but that you solve it, you know, like the senator said, where you copying this law from? They still have this issue of migration. It has no solved. So if we are bringing the law here, you know, you look at it, our environment. Will the law work? Those same conditions that are necessitating the movement, are they not here? You know, for economic reasons, are they being paid more? I about the working environment. In Egypt, you know, take for example, out of the 5,000 plus uh, uh, public health staff that they have, they have over half of them 
well equipped. In Nigeria here, how many of us are well equipped? So these are the facts. Give, the give me a moment. problems are here. Yeah, let, me, let me run for a break now, and I'll come back. And I'd like Senator Lure Egbe and the president of the NME and yourself also to speak to the ratio of the doctor to patient that we have in Nigeria. There is a standard that the, uh, the WHO has prescribed. We are far away from it. And I'd like the, uh, the two doctors that we have on the program to let me know and let our viewers know tonight. What is obtainable? What is the average pay of a doctor in the UK? And what are their counterparts getting in Nigeria? And do they even have security uh, in guiding their profession and their practice here in Nigeria? We dig into all of that when we return from this break, everyone. Join us again. <laughs> since Bolu started using Ulessin Hub, a lot of things has changed in his academic. As a student, it's not only what you're taught at school that you should rely on. You have to find information in everywhere you get. You can get it. One day I was watching a TV program. The advert of Ulessin popped up. It's caught my attention. So I downloaded the app. I made my first subscription in year 2020, and it really helped me a lot. My grade has changed. My grade has evolved. And me myself, the perspective at which I look at things are now different. I would recommend you listen to other parents out there and other learners, because your lesson app is very, very good, and it's very, very affordable. Refarm is the umbrella association of the over 12 million Nigerian rice farmers. Through administration of good and quality extension services, uh, the Nigerian rice farmer has imbibed good agronomic practices, as a result of which the average yield per hectare, which used to be one ton as, as at 2015, is today five metric tons. This has resulted to the increase of the national production from 3 million per annum to 9 million tons per annum. As a result of this, today Nigeria is the largest producer of rice in Africa. Since the beginning of 2015, was the beginning of Ankobora program, Nigeria has officially not imported any rice into the country. All these successes could not have been achieved without the political will of Mr. President. Experience the opulence and security of Swiss Street Doors. With over 30 years' experience, exclusive with a touch of history and craftsmanship, Swiss Street Doors are made from the finest ancient agar and ivory wood. A range of exclusive armored doors, elegant interior doors, carefully crafted by world renowned architects and engineers. At Swiss Street, a door is much more, plus premium quality onyx stones and luxury interiors. Visit Swiss Street today or call now. Swiss Street, blend of beauty and security.
thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. I've been speaking with um, Senator Ibrahim Olori Egbe, who is the Senate Committee Chair on Health in the Senate. Uh, he's been uh, with us virtually from Saudi Arabia, and the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Dr. Oje Mauche. And here with me in our Abuja studio is Mr. Johnson Kalaole, a data and policy analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. So uh, before we went on that break, you were yeah. on the third, and you were re referencing uh, that the, this um, the policy yeah, we'll or the yeah. bill that being proposed by the honourable lawmaker in the in the house was probably a lift from the Egypt scenario. Well, but again, best, it's well, similar to what you have well, in Egypt. In Egypt. Yes. But the question is, it does look like there is an intention, a good intention, that we are losing doctors and so fast and badly too, yeah. that the general population of Nigeria at some point, will, the, the detriment will be that at some point we may not have enough doctors to treat patients in the hospital. Obviously, it's, 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 it's not only in the medical professional loan. You know, you, you, you'll agree with the man that uh, the Nigeria, uh, Nigeria as a nation, we are investing a lot in the educational system. It is easier for us to say nothing is working in Nigeria. It is easier, you know, to sit in public paced, uh, places and just, you know, and make such assertions. But if you look at what they pay in the UK, for example, you know, to go to school, many of those doctors you see, they, they they pay their loans back. They spend years, 10, 20 years, paying back their loan. In fact, I had something in the UK uh, last year or two years ago that some doctors in the UK are now complaining that a Nigerian doctor, take for example, will come and he has spent practically next to nothing in his own country to get trained. He gets to the UK, he writes the exam, and if he passes and he starts practicing and earning almost the same thing with them, and they have no loan to pay. So there's this animosity growing among them. So we agree that we are spending a whole lot uh, to train not just the doctors, including the engineers, in all professions. Take, for example, I have a son in a private university. The medical department is about 2.8 million per semester, not per annum. The, um, the accommodation about 1.8 million, you know, I'm talking about paying 2.750 per semester, but in the in the federal schools, how much do you pay? Maybe a few tens of thousands. So um, I mean, this is, this is the premise on which the honourable yes, is so yes, the nation accepted. has spent so much to subsidise your education. Yes, you need to plow the knowledge into the society. Yes, accepted. But this is not applicable to the doctors alone. It is. This is across what we board. pay across board. Just give me a how, moment. Yeah. How, how, however. If he is proposing that, there are issues. See, agree. Governance is not a, you know, it's not a tea party. You take critical decisions when you should take them. You should be able to assert yourself. But I'm saying that asserting ourselves through policy in this direction. Have we looked at the booby traps? Have we looked at, you know, other underlying conditions? Are you sure that after that five years, that they will not, that they won't go almost immediately, that you will end up having junior doctors alone? Hmm. I mean, that, because the economic issue is not soft, the environment is not soft, the security is not soft, the general atmosphere in the country where people are asking for a better country, you know, you've not solved right. that. L let me go to the president of the NME. Uh, Dr. Uche, give us an understanding uh, what the WHO requires, a population of a doctor to the, po I mean, the ratio of the doctor to the population is one to 600. But in Nigeria, as at the last time, is one to 5,000. Yes. <laughs> How do we do that? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, well, uh, thank you, Sheo. The fundamental fact, let me tell you that what you have even uh, stated is the ratio in urban cities, on, urban. in urban areas. When you talk of rural areas, you may be talking of one is to 9,000. You talk of these areas where there is banditry and terrorism, you may be one in 20,000 or more. So we agree it is dire. But what we are saying is that all the logic being presented does not make sense. If everybody is being subsidized, then you cannot uh, discriminatory, in a discriminatory manner hold down to a few people. All that we have come to realize is that doctors are important, just like other healthcare workers. And the solution is to make a man that is important 
to feel that he belongs to you. It's like looking at a good footballer in your football team and you clamp a band that he cannot leave. You cannot do that. And let me also point out that the basic uh, uh, issue of subsidizing of our education, we need to look at the quality of education we're even subsidizing. I thank God the analysts say that his son is in a private university. As those that their children are in public university, many of them are paying for private residence outside, outside the hostels that nobody can sleep in. Many of them pay for transportation of their children for clinical practice outside. Of course, you have to feed your child outside in a different manner. So government say, oh, we have subsidized tuition, but I'm feeding the child. But, 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 uh, but, but President, so this, this yeah. actually takes me to another area that I'd like you to yes. uh, touch on. And it, it yes. gives me a good premise before I go to uh, Senator Lori Egbe. Now, the yeah. fact is there are things that are enticing your colleagues, yeah. making them to yes, run definitely. off out of Nigeria. Of what course. are these things? Of course. What are these things? Can when you list you, them to us? Yes, so when you discuss uh, brain drain, you look at the factors based on two uh, groups of uh, factors, what you call the push factors and what you call the pull factors. The pull factors are those things that are outside that are making them to go, which is not within our control. Why the push factors are the things within our control that are pushing them out of Nigeria? The first push factor is poverty. Poverty is the best push factor. Let me tell you, a new a trainee doctor in NHS is earning about $40,000 pounds per annum, while our own is earning about three to 3.6 million per annum. If you break down about four. $40,000 per annum, you get an average of about 2.5 to 3 million in a month. So the fresh doctor in Nigeria ends in a year. What the fresh doctor in UK ends in one month and you want him to stay. Let me tell you, our the taxation policy since 2014 have been taking a lot of money out of the pocket of the doctor, taxing his call duty, taxing everything. We are treated like we are common, and then we, they cry that we should be held hostage, okay? Second issue is the insecurity. Doctors are being targeted. I'm sure you know about Dr. Uyi uh, uh, Ilobe, who was murdered at Ohara on 29th of December, 2022. The, murderers, uh, the major culprits are still at large till today. Recently, violence against health workers and doctors have become a common thing there are some happening everywhere. Patient, maybe the, the level of anger in the system has made our patients and their relatives to be violent towards us. Of course, lack of equipment. And our hospital facilities are dilapidated. The, the hospital, some people think that making a hospital beautiful, planting flowers, creating a comfortable common room where people can stay and work is luxury. It is normal. It should be given. And of course, even in the Praise of the fact that doctors are leaving, some are still not employed. And there are stories. You could be hearing one for one policy that they will start replacing those that leave immediately. Meanwhile, the policy has been on the drawing board for months. Nothing right. is happening. Right, doctor. These are the oh, issues yeah. that are pushing. Them. Let me bring uh, Senator Lori Agbe here. Senator, you yes. have heard, you have led your committee for four years now, and these problems are there. Uh, what I will ask you is this. A lot of Nigerians are angry, and they have the right to be angry with the, the manner in which things are going. Now, the question is that even all of them that want to jackpot may not even have the wherewithal to jackpot because it does, it's not a cheap thing to also jackpot in, the, in another sense. What are we doing to stop this? What is the way out, Senator? Uh, thank you. I think you, you, you combine two things there. In the last four years, we've tried to make effort by engaging the executive to change some policies that are general. Like the, I will start from what the NMA doctor said last. Even what we have less in the system, but those ones that we have, they are not absorbed. There's a civil service rule in the federal government that uh, for you to recruit, you have to take permission from head of service. Uh, from head of service to uh, budget office to federal character and so on. So even where doctors are living, when there are people, not only doctors, anyway, 
Health worker generally, nurses are living more than doctors, even if we have to discuss it. I'll come a little bit back to that. So we have been able to discuss to be able to make a policy in place where replacement can be easier. But this has not really worked as we want it to be. Of course, the president generally has no lift embargo, there's no embargo on recruitment of health workers to replace those that are living. Because we have people that don't even still have job, just like you said, that it's not easy to jackpa. But two, we have been pushing for more resources to come to the health sector so that we can have more resources to retain those we have and motivate them. But this has not happened as we want. When resources come, there are general rules in the system. The salary payment system in Nigeria is fixed. You cannot, if doctors, if like the law is saying, the doctors are important or nurses are important, health workers are important, why can't they be categorized separately in terms of salary system? This is not happening. I must say we are frustrated as far as that is concerned. We are pushed for that. But the thing I want to say is this. If we have to solve problem of health workers being drained, or generally drained, like the law, why I'm saying, why I'm particularly not saying that that bill is not the solution, like the analyst said, subsidizing education is general for every Nigerian. And every Nigerian that go through investing system, before you either go to private or public sector, you serve for one year. That's like you are bonded. That's the national youth service. That's like giving back. Because as a doctor, even when you go for NYC, you are paid the same uh, allowance like any other person. That is the thing. So if you want to introduce a rule of tipping people, and you are talking about subsidy, uh, subsidy then it must apply to all. So, Otherwise, Senator, why, yeah. Senator, if you yeah. are selecting yeah. doctors, if yeah. you are selecting doctors, we must come with a policy that we say they are critical human resources that we need, then... Let us, in addition to bonding them, making them to stay, we have to give them certain things to make them to stay. Well, I I want to say that uh, as legislator, we've been able to do certain things, but the executive has not been forthcoming and be able to address some of these issues. That's what I want to say. Thank Senator, you. Senator, before, just before we go, there is this very important yeah. issue. This government is getting out of office. There is another government coming in. And there is need to be a drastic decision to be made in this respect. And I just have only 40 seconds left to the end of this program. Yeah. i just like right. you to mention something. If there is one thing that the Tinubu government needs to do, a lot of people have said, declare a state of emergency on our health institution. In fact, security would say, declare a state of emergency. Education, declare a state of emergency. In every aspect of our lives, needs a state of emergency. If there is one thing that the Tinubu president needs to do, and do urgently, what would that be? Just 10 seconds, Senator. Uh, increase, increase allocation of resources to health. We have... Uh, we, there's a uh, the commitment by Nigeria to put 15% of its budget to health. The maximum we've ever achieved was during Jonathan's time, during a bachelor, when we had about 6 to 7. In this administration, we've had only 4 to 5%. And there are other sectors that get much more. Right. If health is important, All allocate right. even minimum, let's start from 10%, and say between the first and four, four years of this administration, we'll get to 15%. All right. We need resources. Yeah, we, we need, need to do more. We need to close then, now. All the yeah. issues that we said that, that affect our health, if we have more resources, we can use that resources to address some of the issues. So Pre increase Pre resources. Pre President, and President, and I, want, I wanted you to, yeah, well Doc, Dr. Uche, yeah. I wanted you to mention something, but yeah, uh, Senator has eaten into your time. Just in five Thank seconds you. or ten, if you can, what do you yes. think needs to be done urgently? Just quickly. One, one, like he said, improve funding. And secondly, I want to appeal to the our Federal House of Representatives. This bill, they are trying to touch one part of. A holistic review had taken place in the Senate as uh, sponsored by Senator Ibrahim Olori Egbe, and it has passed public hearing, has been passed in the Senate, and it was sent to House of Reps for concurrence for more than one year now. Please, can they pass the All right. reviewed Medical and Dental Practitioners Act quickly? Let's get yeah. busy. Yeah, Thank wanting you. to be done. Jo be in the health sector. Take away subsidy. It's killing Nigeria. Thank you, gentlemen. There we go. Tomorrow, we have another problem to tackle. Today, it was health and oil issue. But then, we will not keep silence until we know for sure that our problems are getting reduced and Nigerians have a better life. We'll keep having this conversation. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I thank you so much, my guests on the program tonight. That's our show for today, everyone. And thanks for watching. I'm sure Kimale. Bye-bye.
It's happening live at the TSS Learning Center. It's the Seven Habits Leadership Camp for Children. We are really developing the leaders of tomorrow, and we're excited to be doing this here in Nigeria with TSS. They can control their emotions and they can make decisions in their life and it helps them become independent. Teaching them leadership principles, teaching them new paradigms about how they can lead their own life and be leaders of not only their own life, but of others. We had activity going, we had interaction with the kids, we practiced active empathic listening because this is going to change lives because it changes the way that our kids think. And I think this is really important for us to see this as an opportunity for us to give something that we want for our kids here in Nigeria. Register your child today. Visit www.tsas.com forward slash bootcamp to get started. Mommy, it is time for us to leave this old place. One of your errands is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. A big plan. What do you want? I want a senior position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check everything within. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumu and it's great to be on the show again. I've been going through this book again titled Build It. How the world's most inspiring companies started by Ayokunle Adeniji. This is a very fascinating book. It tells the story 